When a fire occurs, the first idea that comes to mind for most people is running away, especially since the space on a ship is so narrow, it can cause even more panic. However, if we understand the fire prevention concept properly and practice good safety habits, we will be able to prevent the occurrence of fires. A fire is not necessarily always catastrophic. If we stay calm, there is a good chance the fire will be extinguished. We must understand the enemy before we defeat it. So now, let us learn some basic knowledge about ship fires. Whether on land or at sea, as long as there are three elements, fuel, oxygen, and temperature, and they are involved in a chain reaction, a fire will occur. This is the so-called fire tetrahedron. Comparing to a fire on land, a ship fire has the additional characteristics of complicated internal structure, higher temperature, heavy smoke, hard to locate fire source, and limited rescuing spaces. On top of that, the weather factors at sea is complicated, and there is the risk of the ship capsizing when flooded. Therefore, it takes proper firefighting arrangements and drills beforehand to successfully control a fire and protect the safety of our partners and ourselves on board. According to statistics, six fire accidents occurred on Taiwanese jiggers from 2015 to 2019, causing some jiggers to sink. Some crew members on these vessels fell overboard, went missing, and even lost their lives. Do not let this information scare you, though. As long as we understand the common origins and causes of fire and take proper precautions, we will be able to minimize the potential for a fire. Common sources of fire in a ship include the engine room, accommodation, bridge, and galley. The main reasons for fire in the engine room include 1. Fuel pipe leakage when the fuel is exposed to high temperature generated by the exhaust pipes, a fire may occur. Therefore, regular maintenance of the fuel pipe system should be performed to ensure normal operation. 2. Grease cleaning cloth ignited by cigarettes. Therefore, smoking in the engine room is prohibited. Grease cleaning cloth should also be placed in specific places not left out. 3. Electronic circuit overload, generating sparks or causing the electronic cord to catch fire. Therefore, appliances should be inspected and maintained regularly to ensure they are in good condition. Reasons for fire in accommodation bridge include 1. Smoking. Dropping cigarette butts could ignite fabric, wood, or other flammable materials nearby. Smoking inside the accommodation is prohibited. 2. Cooking. There are flammable materials like blankets and clothing in the accommodation, so cooking is prohibited inside the accommodation. 3. Hanging clothes. Fabric is flammable. The high temperature of the chimney might cause clothes to catch fire. Therefore, Clothes should be hung away from the chimney or other places with high temperature. The galley is another place that could catch fire due to cooking. Never leave a heated pan unwatched. Turn the stove off before leaving the galley. The cooking hood must be cleaned and maintained regularly. Also, electrical fires could start wherever there are electrical wires. Therefore, make sure sockets are not overloaded. The electrical wires are not old and warm, and the surrounding environment is not wet to decrease the chance of fire. In addition, get into the habit of always unplugging appliances when not using them. Fire risks will be significantly decreased if the above-mentioned practices are implemented. However, if a fire does occur, do not panic. All crew members should follow the four following basic guidelines. A. Identify the fire source, type, and severity. In the early stage, proper tools such as water, 
fire extinguishers or fire blankets could be used to put out the fire. Inform the captain as soon as possible if the fire is burning too fast. The captain will inform all crew members through broadcasting or alarms. He will also call for outside help when necessary. The captain will sound fire alarms according to the following rules. Fire alarm should be sounded first with a continuous general alarm for at least 10 seconds and then with the following alarm patterns to notify the location of fire with whistle or general alarm sounds. One long sound and one short sound for fire on the deck. One long sound and two short sounds for fire in the engine room. One long sound and three short sounds for fire in the accommodation. B. The different firefighting teams should start their tasks immediately. Other crew members should move to the appointed muster location with their life jackets when hearing the fire alarm. They should provide assistance according to the officer's command or when necessary. C. Switch off the power supply to the affected zones. Cut off the power and fuel supply to fire zones. D. Close all doors, windows, and vents when leaving the cabins. This will decrease the spreading of fire and smoke and minimize damage. Before starting firefighting tasks, we need to have a better understanding of fire itself and firefighting equipment to ensure our own safety and increase rescue efficiency. So, let's get started! It is recommended to put a fire out immediately while it's still in the early stage. In the early stage of a fire, only a small area is affected and the fire is not yet burning too fast. So it is easy to put out. As long as we can control the fire source and prevent it from spreading, severe damage can be prevented. Common fire types can be categorized into three kinds according to the cause of fires. The first type is general fires, also known as Class A fires. Fire involving general flammable materials, including wood, paper fiber, cotton, fabric, synthetic resin, rubber, and plastic. A general fire can be extinguished by lowering the temperature. Therefore, water is the most ideal tool in these cases. Bring water nearby and pour it over the fire source to lower the temperature of the burning material. This should stop the fire effectively. Or use the nearest fire extinguisher to put out the fire source. The second type is grease fires, also known as Class B fires. Fire involving flammable liquids like petrol or flammable gases like ethane gas or acetylene gas or flammable grease like paint. Never try to extinguish a grease fire with water. Adding water onto heated oil could cause the fire spreading. Common grease fires in daily life are fires caused by heated oil in pans when cooking. When this happens, turn off the heat and take a lid or a fire blanket to cover the fire source. The oxygen inside the pan will reduce and the fire will suffocate and eventually be put out in this way. For grease fires that occur in other places, such as a fire caused by boat fuel exposed to high temperature, the best solution is to use a fire extinguisher. The third type is electrical fires, also known as Class C fires. Fires involving electrical wires or any plugged appliances are considered electrical fires. For electrical fires, the first step is to turn off the power supply to affected zones, then put out the fire with CO2 or ABC dry powder fire extinguishers. By identifying the correct fire types and responding with the proper firefighting techniques, 
fires can be extinguished in the early stage to protect our safety and the facilities on board. Now that we know how to respond to different types of fires, let us learn about the firefighting equipment on board. Please refer to the safety equipment list for fishing vessels. Each fishing vessel should be equipped with the required amount of firefighting equipment. The specific items and numbers of each item are listed in the safety equipment list for fishing vessels. Firefighting related categories include firefighting equipment and fireman's outfit. Firefighting equipment include the following items power driven fire pump. Hydrant, fire hose, fixed fire extinguishing system for the engine room, foam extinguishers for the engine room, and portable extinguishers. Fireman's outfit include the following: firefighting suits, pants, shoes, helmets, gloves, breathing apparatus, cylinders, and axes. The captain and chief engineer must check this equipment regularly. To make sure they are in good condition, thus ensuring the safety of crew members when accidents occur. Next, let us learn how to use common firefighting equipment. A. Fire extinguishers. Usually, there are the following types of fire extinguishers on every ship: dry powder fire extinguishers, carbon dioxide (CO2) fire extinguishers, and foam extinguishers. Dry powder and carbon dioxide (CO2) extinguishers are used in the same way. Let's take the dry powder extinguishers as an example. Operating steps are as follows: Step one, remove the safety pin. Step two, aim at the base of the fire with its hose. Step three, squeeze the handle to release dry powder. Sweep the base of a fire left and right to cover the flame to extinguish the fire. The next type is foam extinguishers. Products from different manufacturers may be used differently. Steps for using a foam extinguisher with a squeezing handle is the same as those for using a dry powder extinguisher. Therefore, we will introduce the steps for using another type of extinguisher. Step one: Remove the lid. Push down the button and rotate it to pierce through the internal chemicals sealing film. Step two: Bring the extinguisher to a fire field first. Turn it upside down to mix chemicals inside. Aim the hose at the wall above the fire source. Foam will automatically spread out and cover the fire to extinguish the fire. Please note that if the extinguisher is tilted too much, held horizontally, or turned upside down before arriving at the fire field, the internal chemicals will be mixed and foam will be released too early. This will potentially result in insufficient amount of foam produced later to cover the whole fire source. When using it, the fire extinguisher should remain upside down to avoid interruption of spraying. When facing the liquid fire source, you should aim the hose at the wall above it, so the foam can cover the burning liquid completely. Do not aim at the fire itself to prevent the fire from spreading. Just a reminder: extinguishers should be placed in highly accessible areas or entrances of more fire-prone zones, so they will be available in time when a fire occurs. Stand upwind and keep a safe distance when using a fire extinguisher. B. Steps for using fire hydrants. Step one: Open the hose box. After taking out the fire hose, enroll the hose out towards the direction of the fire field. Assign crew members to set up the fire hose. Attach the fire hose to the hydrant. Step two: Assemble the nozzle to the fire hose. Aim the nozzle at the fire field. Step three: Turn on the water valve and start the water flow. You can switch to normal mode or mist mode by rotating the nozzle handle. A group of five to six people is recommended when using a hydrant. Two control the nozzle, 
one controls the water valve. Two to three people help to hold the fire hose for stability. C. Portable fire pumps. Step one: Bring the pump to the side of the ship to extract seawater. Step two: Assemble the inlet pipe. Place the suction end of the pipe into the sea until it is more than 30 cm deep. Tie the pipe to any fixed structure nearby. Assemble the outlet hose to the water hose. Step three: Start the pump. Turn on the fuel switch valve, allowing fuel to flow into the carburetor. Activate the pump electrically or manually. Step four: Aim the hose at the fire source and deliver water. If you are a member of the firefighting team, you should wear a fire suit if available before starting any firefighting procedures. A fire suit should be worn as follows. Step one. Check that there is enough pressure inside the cylinder. Then put on fire pants and fasten the suspenders. Step two: Put on fire shoes. After fastening or trying on the foot covers, and cover the shoes with the pant legs. Step three: Carry the cylinder on the back. Keep the opening downwards and fasten the belt. Step four: Put on the coat. Make sure to button up and protect the neck. Step five: Put on the respiratory mask. Make sure it is sealed around your face. Then connect the delivery line from the cylinder to the respiratory mask. Step six: After putting on the helmet, put over the head cover. Step seven: Put on the gloves. Cover the gloves with the sleeves and fasten them. When putting on the fire suit, it is recommended to have one to two crew members assist. This will not only increase the efficiency of putting on the suit, but also ensure that the suit is worn correctly. After understanding the different fire types in firefighting equipment, it is time to look into another important topic: the firefighting teams. This is one of the keys to timely response when a fire occurs. Every vessel should assign firefighting teams or stations on board to respond immediately in case a fire breaks out. This is the so-called fire master. Every crew member must know which station he is assigned to and the duties involved, so he can act immediately when a fire occurs. There are usually four firefighting stations: bridge, firefighting, engine room. And medical station. The members of each station will have their assigned duties and required equipment as follows. Bridge station, one captain, act as the chief commander, gives out orders from the bridge using the VHF RT and speaker. Second officer, assist with the delivery of the captain's orders and initiate distress alerting. Firefighting station, chief officer. When the fire occurs on deck, in the accommodation, orders are given with the VHF RT. Identify the fire type and decide on the method for firefighting. Assist the chief engineer when a fire occurs in the engine room. The crew members are responsible for the following duties: one, carry extinguishers and assist with firefighting. Two, assist the chief officer to evacuate all crew members to master points and count heads. Three, close vents, all necessary doors and windows, cut off the power supply to the fire zones. Four, assemble fire hoses and nozzles and assist with firefighting. Five, put on the fireman's outfit and assist with firefighting. Six. Assist the crew members to put on the fireman's outfit and assist with firefighting. Seven, carry the axe and assist with firefighting. Engine room station. One, chief engineer. 
the chief commander of engine room fires, use the VHFRT, identify the fire type, and decide on the method for firefighting. Operate the fixed fire extinguishing system in the engine room when necessary. 2. Second engineer. Activate the main fire pump or the emergency fire pump. Crew members are responsible for the following duties. 1. Carry extinguishers and assist with firefighting. 2. Activate the emergency fuel shut-off valve. Cut off power supplies to the fire zones. 3. Close fans, necessary doors and windows in the engine room. 4. Assemble fire hoses and nozzles and assist with firefighting. Medical Station Crew members carry out the following duties. Carry first aid kits for medical support. Now, let's review the complete firefighting procedure using what we just learned. Anyone who spots signs of fires, such as flames, smoke, or smells, should identify the fire source, fire type, and severity. Should try to put it out with proper tools, such as water, extinguishers, and fire blankets. Report to the captain when the fire is burning too fast. The captain will activate the fire alarm and sound it according to the fire alarm rules. All crew members should start performing their duties according to their assigned stations. The following four procedures should be carried out simultaneously. Emergency radio calls for outside help should be placed. The power supplies to fire zones should be cut off. The firefighting team tasks should be started and the crew members should be gathered. The captain will determine whether emergency calls for outside help is necessary. The chief officer will operate the switchboard to cut off the power and fuel supplies to zones around the fires. After starting the firefighting team tax, relevant personnel of each team should bring required equipment and follow the commands of the captain and officers and move to proper locations according to the fire control plan and means of escape plan. Start the following action at the same time. 1. Assemble the fire hose to the hydrant. Assemble the nozzle to the other end. Aim the nozzle at the fire source and turn on the water valve to spray water and lower the temperature. 2. The crew members equipped it with fireman's outfit should put them on under the assistance of other crew members and keep them on until this task is finished. The crew member in the fireman's outfit should quickly take over the nozzle and move to the fire field for firefighting. Other firefighting station member should help with moving the hose and prevent it from kinking and causing insufficient water pressure. If the temperature is too high, the firefighting station members can exchange their positions and take turns controlling the nozzle. Please know that if you need to enter a cabin, make sure to check the temperature of the door by touching it first. If it is too hot, spray water on the door to cool it down. Also, when a person enters a cabin, another person should stay at the corner of the door to straighten the fire hose in case it kinks and affects the water pressure. After hearing the alarm, crew members not assigned to any firefighting station should bring life jackets and move to the specific muster points immediately. Above are the main steps of firefighting. Each vessel might vary in details. But don't worry, routine fire drills will be performed on all vessels. Through hands-on drill practices, crew members will be able to understand their duties and the whole procedures much better. Therefore, it is important to participate in the drills and pay attention while doing so. Do not overlook the importance of this process.
would be great if the fire could be put out with the above procedures. However, sometimes fires could grow rapidly, or the firefighting operation could not be carried out as planned. Depending on the situation, the captain might give order to abandon ship. After all, the safety of all the crew members is the most important thing. Life-saving equipment must be used during the process of abandoning the ship to ensure everyone's safety. Each fishing vessel should have the required amount of life-saving equipment. You can find further details in the safety equipment list for fishing vessels. In general, life-saving equipment will include the following: life rafts, which should have the aggregate capacity to accommodate the total number of crew members. The surrounding area should be clear. Other equipment include life buoys with self-igniting lights, smoke signals, and lifelines, life jackets, life throwing appliances, parachute signals, epper and sart. The number of life jackets must be greater than the total number of people on board. Similar to the fire equipment, the captain and chief engineer must check life-saving equipment regularly and make sure they are in good condition. Next, let's see how to put on a life jacket. Put the life jacket on as if you are wearing a vest. Fasten the buckle and tighten the belt. Once we understand how to use all the life-saving equipment on board, we will be able to use them if abandoned ship is needed. When abandoned ship is needed, the alarm signal is seven short sounds and one long sound. All crew members should immediately go to the master point with the required equipment and immersion suit, according to their abandoned ship team tasks. Second officer and assigned crew members should set up an embarkation ladder at a proper location on the side of the vessel. Following the assigned team mission, the chief officer will release life rafts onto the sea with the help of assigned crew members and pull out the inflation drawstrings on the rafts. After the life rafts are inflated, crew members can move to life rafts by teams. You can learn about the details of abandoned ship deployment and process from the Abandoned Ship Master List and regularly held abandoned ship drills. Have you understood the above mentioned information about firefighting and life saving? At the end, we would like to provide you with one important document the fire control plan and means of escape plan. This chart marks locations of every safety equipment and proper routes for firefighting and life saving with various icons. If we familiarize ourselves with this chart now, we will be able to react immediately when facing different hazards. We want to remind you again that the most important thing when facing a fire on board is to stay calm. Please obey the following rules when working on board. 1. Place firefighting and life-saving equipment in highly accessible locations. Check their conditions and expiration dates. 2. Areas around the life rafts and escape routes should stay clear. 3. Fire detectors should be maintained regularly. 4. Hose boxes should contain fire hoses and nozzles that are compatible. It is up to us to protect the safety and lives of all the members on board. <laughs>